and those of you who are present here. Rabbi Michael Schwab and Rabbi Alex Friedman from North Suburban Synagogue Bethel will be officiating. And in just a moment, the rabbis will approach the family to perform the ancient ceremony of Kriya. Following the service, everyone is invited to the Sarah Schoenberg residence at 720 Maple Avenue. You, they're gonna be doing it outside, depending on the weather, and that's in Evanston. For the hours, please see the service folder, and for those of you who are online, all that information is on our funeral home website. Memorial contributions in his memory to their synagogue, North Suburban Synagogue Bethel. And once again, that information is also on the service folder and on our website. The last and gentle reminder of your phones being turned off. And at the request of the family, we want everyone to make sure that you have your masks, masks on over your mouth and nose. At this time, we're going to cut Kriya as a family. This is where we tear a piece of our garment in order to signify that now that Mel is no longer physically in our lives, there's a tear in our lives that cannot easily be sewn up. So I'll lead you in the bracha, and then I'll ask you to cut Kriya. The Lord gives, and sadly, sometimes the Lord takes, and through it all, praise God. Amen. Family can be seated if you wish. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, it's a little warm out here, so the funeral home staff will be walking around with uh, water under the idea of pikuach nefesh. Take advantage of the water. Also, we have cold towels if you want to put them around your neck. It's, just, it's important to stay healthy and hydrated. I've only been the rabbi at Bethel for a couple of years, but because Mel is a regular for Shabbat and holidays, I've gotten to know him over the years. And in the last uh, year and a half since the pandemic, I've gotten to know him in a different way. And um, several times, maybe more than several, uh, I would get a phone call before Shabbat or a holiday. Not five minutes before, but not five hours before either. And it would be Mel. And he would say, can you please tell me how I can how I can phone into the service. And he wasn't in the room, didn't have the, the Zoom, wasn't by clicking a link, it was entering all these Zoom digits. So like 15 of them in the right order, and then he could listen to the service. And he would do that. And then a couple of weeks or months later, he would call me again, I lost the number, am I getting it correct? And of course I would, I would give it to him. But I, I treasure those conversations. They were short, they were sweet, but they showed his commitment to being part of the service even wherever he was, uh, however he could be there. And if it wasn't in the room, he still wanted to be part of it. He still wanted to connect the Jewish community, uh, services, Shabbat, holidays, and our Bethel community were that important to him. And I began with the Psalm, Psalm 15, which speaks about honesty and integrity, which of course he embodied, um, which he demonstrated with who he was and, and how he lived, which is, makes this Psalm especially appropriate and fitting for Mel. Mizmorga David, Adonai, Mia Gorba O Holacha, Mishgon Beharko Jacha, Holach Tamim O Fo El Sedek, Vadover Emet Bilbao, Nova Gala Aldishono, Loa Salave Raha, the Herpa Gonasa Al Kerovo, Nivze Be Nav Nimas, Bed Yere Adonai Yehabed, Nishbaga Haba Favoyamir, Kaspo Gonatan Baneshech, Veshohad, Alnaki Lolakah, Ose Ele Loimot Le Olam. A Psalm of David, do we deserve to enter God's sanctuary? Can we merit a place in the presence of God? Live with integrity. Do what is right. Speak the truth without deceit. Have no slander upon your tongue. Do no evil to others. Do not mistreat your neighbor. Spurn a contemptible person, but honor those who revere Hashem. Never retract a promise once made, though it may bring you harm. Lend no money at unfair rates. 
accept no bribe against the innocent. Make these deeds your own, then shall you stand firm forever. Amen. I'm going to chant from Psalm 103 in memory of Mel. Kirachem avabanim, richam ananai al yireav, kuyada yitzreinu, zachur kiafar anachnu, enosh kechatsir yamav, kitzitz asadek en yatsihitz, kiruach ovra bo venenu, velo yakireinu od mekomo, vechesed ananai meolam vadolam al yireav, Vitzid kato livnevanim. As a father has compassion for his children, God has compassion for those who show reverence. God knows how we are fashioned. God remembers that we are just dust. The days of mortals are like grass. We flourish as the flowers of the fields. Wind passes over them and they are no more, and no one can recognize where they grew. But God's compassion is everlasting. God's kindness to children's children to all the reverent ones endures age after age, unchanging. In my mind, Mel is exactly the reverent ones that this psalm is describing. And God's compassion for him, just like Mel's compassion for his own children, will be everlasting. I'm now going to recite from Psalm 23, and then afterwards, if you'd like to join me, inside the service folder is the translation, and we'll recite that together. Mis mor le David, Adonai roi lo achsar, binotesh e yarbitseni, al me menuchot yina haleni, nafshi e shovev, yan chenim magle tzedek le man shemo, gam ki elech begei tzal mavet, lo ira rakia taimadi, shiftecha u mishan techa hema yina chamuni, taroch le fane shulchan neget sorai, Di shanta va shemen roshi kosir vaya. Ach tova chesed yudafuni koyame chayai. Vishavti bevet adonai. Leorech yamihim. Join me if you will. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have no doubt that Mel will dwell in the house of the Lord forever just like you will dwell in all of our hearts for the rest of our lives. One last pe- passage that I want to read. It's a piece of wisdom from Ben Sira, who is an ancient philosopher. And this is specifically to Mel's children. He said, when parents who have taught their children pass on, that passing is not death. As long as the child lives, there's a part of that parent that can never die. When alive, a parent rejoices with their children And in death, that parent will not grieve, for he knows that his legacy will be passed on, the door of a door, from one generation to the next. I'm now going to call up Lynn to say some words about her father. Thank you all for coming, and rabbis, I want you to know that my father would be so happy and proud to know he had two, two rabbis at his <laughs> service. Uh, 88 sounds like a nice number, representing a long life well lived. Though he persevered through a lot of health challenges in the recent years, my dad was never one to say enough, and he was always hoping to get back on the golf course. There were a lot of things to admire about my dad. His work ethic, his go-go attitude never to sit in one place for too long, his exercise regimen, his enjoyment of a good meal, sometimes with a good stiff drink, and of course, finished with dessert. My dad taught me through his words and his actions how to be a good person, to be honest and extremely loyal, 
not long ago, when he was having difficulty with his mobility and using a walker, he found a $20 bill in the floor of the OSCO. He managed to reach down and pick up that $20 bill. He was very excited that he found it. And instead of pocketing it, uh, the money, as some people would, he got himself to the pharmacy where they knew him, of course. Um, he took himself to the pharmacy counter and insisted that they hold on to it in case someone came to claim it. He taught me how to be the perfect dental patient and blessed me with extremely good hair. <laughs> he was a dapper fellow, always dressed just right and not a hair out of place. But most of all, his life was centered around his love of family and of Judaism. My dad and mom were married for 65 years. They were fixed up by Bernie Elpert and Barbara Pressburger, our blessed memories. My mom was 16 at the time, my dad 18. They were rarely apart from that point forward. My dad took good care of my mom, my brother, David, and I. And I know he would be worried about my mother. <laughs> Sorry. We will take good care of her. Judaism was his guiding principle. He davened every morning, volunteered as an usher during the high holidays at Bethel, and for years showed up faithfully at the Thursday morning minion. There was even a several years where he sang in the synagogue choir. And he absolutely loved being around the dining room table with his family on Shabbat, the holidays, and the Passover seders. Whether it was at my folks' house in Deerfield with my mom doing the cooking or at our place in Evanston. The Passover seders were especially enjoyable and meaningful, particularly the one memorable year when Jeff and I became engaged minutes before the first cup of wine was poured. My father deeply loved my mother and he loved his children and, his, and their spouses, Jeff and Tracy. He so loved his grandchildren. Nahal, Nadav, Ellie, Gabby, Katie, and Jack. <laughs> and his nieces, Susie and Sharon, and his nephew Bill, and their spouses and their families. And he found great pride and fulfillment in all and everybody's actions and accomplishments. Dad, now that you, you'll be reconnected with Aunt Edith and Uncle Mort, I am reassured to know that you will be surrounded by limitless love, conversation, and laughter. I love you, Dad. Thank you. D David's now going to say a few words about his father. Can I take this? So I'll just keep going. I'm going to try to keep it together because I'm a big crier. Um, my dad would be look, looked at me today and he'd be like, Dave, where, where's your coat? You should have a coat on because he always was so dressed up and he loved to be dressed up. And he was, what did we say in the car? He just loved to, he just loved to dress up and he would, that's, that was his, he loved that. Um, my dad, also, I have to say this beautiful day. My dad was obsessed with the weather. He would, he loved beautiful days. He would always check the weather. My dad loved being Jewish. He lived it every day. He especially loved, he especially loved the Jewish holidays. He also loved being a dentist. Yes. He loved being a dentist. We had this argument last night. He did love being a dentist. I, yes. So I guess that you could say that he lived his best life. He loved Chicago and sports, especially the Cubs, who he finally saw win the World Series um, in his lifetime. I always wanted my dad's approval, even as I grew older into middle age. Uh, one of his granddaughters and I are both teachers at a Jewish school, which makes him very happy. I think I got that approval before he passed. I'm sorry. I came to visit in July. He was so weak. But he insisted we go downstairs to go to services as I was leaving the next day. And I didn't come home that much. I was really worried about him. But he insisted in his usual way. And he said, I said, are you okay, Dad? And he said, 
and that wasn't him. He'd always be like, whatever, I'm fine. <laughs> that was his way, this, the, the, the arm. Uh, and he shrugged. He was determined to take him, take me with him to services and to say a prayer first to love Sister Edith. It was that important to him that I was there. That's my dad. We will miss you, Dad, Papa. Tracy and Allie, Gabby, Katie, Jack, and I all are send our love to my dad. As many of you know, Mel passed away on Monday evening, the eve of the holiday of Shmini Atzeret. Shmini Atzeret is a unique holiday in that it is both the eighth day of a larger holiday of Sukkot, as well as a holiday unto itself. It's also unique as there is no special ritual connected to Shmini Atzeret in the Torah. Therefore, the rabbis wonder at its purpose. And in their answer, I think there's something important today. One of the more well-known responses in the Midrash states that after a whole month of holidays, when the Jewish pilgrims would gather together in Jerusalem, busying themselves celebrating, praying, and performing rituals of those special days, from Rosh Hashanah all the way to Sukkot, God was overjoyed by the closeness of his people, and he did not want them to go and return to their everyday lives. So he created Shemini Atzeret, a holiday whose purpose was simple, to provide one more day together, a day without intricate ritual, a day to represent the closeness of the relationship and to express the desire not to say goodbye just yet. I'd like to think of today as our Shmini Atzeret for Mel. We're not ready to say goodbye. Mel has passed, but we gather together, creating at least one more day when we can feel his presence close to us, when we are together as a community, a community of those who loved him and whom he loved in return, assembled to remember and honor him. Today we recall all the heartwarming memories of what it was like to be in his presence, to celebrate with him, to spend time with him, and to have his life touch ours. For he lived a wonderful life he was a mensch of the highest order. He was dedicated to his patience, to his Judaism, to his community, and most of all, to his beloved family. Therefore, it is my sad honor to express my personal condolences, as well as those of Rabbi Kurtz, whom I communicated with this, uh, with this morning, and those of Mel's synagogue community at North Suburban Synagogue Bethel, to his precious family. Teddy, to his devoted wife of over 65 years, to his beloved children, Lynn and Jeff, as well as David and Tracy, to his adored grandchildren, Michal, Nadav, Ali, Katie, Gabby, and Jack, and to all of his family and friends from near and far. My hope is that the prayers we recite and the words we share provide some measure of comfort at a difficult time. As many of you know, Mel grew up in Portage Park here in Chicago, in a tight-knit family and a close Jewish community. From an early age, he helped his father run the several newspaper stands that made up the family business. And he had a wonderful and close relationship with his older sister, Edith, until the very day she died, a little more than 10 years ago. Mel and Hetty met young. As you heard, he was 18, she was 16. In fact, they were set up by Bethel congregant, Bernie Alpert, may he rest in peace, and the couples remained lifelong friends. Therefore, Mel and Hetty had known each other for over 70 years and were married for 65 of them. They were virtually inseparable, as you heard, and were described by others as the lovebirds. For Mel, Hetty was number one and vice versa. When Mel opened his dental practice, the two even worked together, she running the office and he seeing the patients. Together, they raised a family. Together, they traveled to Israel and back to Germany, where her family was from and to so many other destinations that they enjoyed together. Together, they made a life for themselves and embraced the Jewish community, especially Bethel. They were partners and soulmates and a beautiful supporting relationship that lasted a lifetime. Hedy, I can only imagine how difficult things will be without him. And I just hope that you have some small measure of comfort, maybe not today, but in the future, knowing that your memories with him will always be with you 
and that I believe his spirit is still with you and always will be. As a father, as you heard, he was dependable, caring, and supportive. Sounds like Mel. Along with that, he expected his children to follow the rules, and he had high expectations for their aspirations and their character. But you know what? As you heard, his children are grateful that he was a wonderful role model and what a caring father he was, and that he wanted the best and most for and from them. He was also a proud and loving grandfather with a soft-hearted touch who saved the stories of his childhood for that generation. He will be missed greatly by all of them. As a dentist, he was highly respected and cared dearly for his patients. After graduating from Illinois, both undergrad and school of dentistry, he enlisted in the Air Force Dental Corps and rose to the rank of captain, spending a few years after marriage at Sachs Air Force Base in California before returning to Illinois to open his practice in Arlington Heights. He saw patients, as many of you know, until he was 80, never missing a beat. I always said, he always looked so young. I was just telling the family when he had his 80th birthday at Bethel and he had an aliyah to the Torah, and it said on the thing that he was his 80th birthday, I didn't know what his age was. I couldn't believe it. I, he really looked 65 to me, like 15 years younger than he was. And he just always had a spring in his step. As a Jew, he was truly pious. Judaism defined his life, his values, and his outlook. He put on tefillin and davened every day. As a young man, he was active in his family, Shoal and Portage Park, when he moved there. And when he moved to Highland Park, he and Hetty were de devoted members to Bethel for over 55 years. Mel served on the ritual committee right up until his passing. And until the COVID era, he made sure he was at every single meeting. Even if it had to be, as Rabbi Friedman said on Zoom, he tried to figure out how to do it. He was a lead usher. He was a morning minion regular until the move to Gidwitz and COVID made that impossible. And I tell you, the morning minion regulars absolutely missed him. They were Shabbos regulars and holiday regulars and often attended synagogue programs and lectures. Many of their friends were made at Bethel. The kids celebrated all their smachot at our shul, preschool, religious school, bar mitzvah, b'nei mitzvah, and even a wedding. Bethel was like a second home to them. One of the things I observed and adored about Mel was how much he loved being a Levite. Nothing made him, made him happier than getting called to that Torah for the second Aliyah, which he often did. And his pride and his heritage was so heartwarming to me, it always made me smile. Seeing him next to that Torah was just a sight. Personally, Mel was a foundational presence at Bethel. When I got there, he was just always there in a positive way, always kind, always compassionate, always dependable, always present. It was a given that Shoal and Judaism were important to him, and you could just tell that in the way that he acted. He was not a congregant that you needed to convince to come to Shoal or care about Judaism or give him reasons why. He just loved it. I will personally miss him very much, and our community is that much poorer because of his passing. So whether you remember Mel for the big stuff, his love of family, his loyalty to those he loved, his devotion to Judaism, his dedication to his patients, or his commitment to living a life of honesty and Jewish values, or the smaller stuff, his love of golf and tennis, his dedication to the Cubs and the Bears, let us all remember Mel with great respect and great fondness. Yizikro Baruch, may his memory always be for a blessing, and let everyone here say, Amen. And I'm now going to ask uh, our wonderful friends here at the cemetery to lower the casket. That's up to the family. I didn't, I didn't want to be there, here. But I came because it's my obligation. So, hello everybody, my name is Marina Gurevich. I've been a doctor's service assistant for many years. And Dr. Sarah, I didn't think I, I could speak. So Dr. Sarah and Harry and made my life possible in this country. And I have to say thank you to Dr. to Harry, to everybody of you for making my life possible because he gave me my, my job that I hold for many years. And uh, this is what make me, my family, and all of us on my side possible. 
to live here. Dr. Serd was part of us, as, a, as my boss, as my friend, as part of my family. He was always present to all my kids' graduation, my kids' wedding, my, my, my grandkids' bar mitzvahs. He always was there. So again, thank you, Dr. Serd, for making my life possible here in the country. Thank you to all of you. You've been here before us. Thank you. Psalm 121. Shir la malot, esai nai la rime, ay nevo esri, esri mi matonai, o se shamayim va'aretz, ayitain la mot raglecha, al yanum shomrecha, hini lo yanum velo yishan, shomer Yisrael, adonai shomrecha, adonai tzilcha, yad yaminecha, Yom HaMashem HaShleya Kekha V'yareach Malayla Adonai Yishmur Chami Kolra Yishmur Ed Nafshecha Adonai Yishmur Tzedcha Ovoecha Me'ata V'yad Olaham Song for Ascents I turn my eyes to the mountains From where will my help come? My help comes from God, maker of heaven and earth God will not let your foot give way, your guardian will not slumber the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your protection, a guardian at your right hand. By day the sun will not strike you, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm and guard your life. God guards your going and coming, now and forevermore. Al Mikomo Yavo Vishalom. May Dr. Melvin Sered go to God in peace, and let us say Amen. Before the vault cover is placed, I'm going to add is, uh, Israeli earth um, in between the casket and the vault cover. There's already some also inside the casket. It represents Mel's eternal connection to both the people and land of Israel. As the vault cover is lowered, I'm going to recite from Psalm 33. Ein ha-melech nosha barov chayil, gibur lo yinatzel barov koach, sheker ha-sus lichua, uvarov chaylo lo yimaleitz. Hine ein Adonai el yirav, l'miachalim lechasto, l'atzil mimavet nasham, uchayotam b'ra'av. Nafshenu chikta la donai, ezrenu magineenu huhu, ki vo yismach libenu, ki vashem kod shovatachnu, yi chastacha adonai alenu kasher, ki chanu laho. The perfect rock whose work we perceive reveals, a faithful God, true, upright, and honest. The rock is perfect in every way. God rules below and on high, causing death and giving life, bringing down to the grave, but raising us up as well. The rock is unfathomable, but just and patient and filled with compassion. We know, God, that your discretion is beyond us. We know, O oh God, that your word is good, but your judgments at times, like today, puzzle us. And though we may brood over harsh realities, we still place our trust in your righteousness. We sadly accept our lot and the love that remains with us forever. Have mercy upon us and strengthen us to maintain our courage at this time of sorrow. Adonai Natan, the Lord has given. Adonai Lakach, and sadly the Lord has taken. Yishem Adonai Mivarach, praise be the name of God. Reashov ha'afar aha'aretz kishaya, va'aruach tashuv el halohim asher natana. 
The dust returns to the earth as it was, but the spirit returns to God who gave it. May Zelig ben Moshe of Amalka's soul be bound up in the bond of life eternal. Send comfort, God, to those who mourn. Grant strength to those whose burden is sorrow. And let everyone here please say, Amen. ask those um, who are able to stand who are seated to stand if it's hard to stand stay seated it's okay I'm going to recite the memorial prayer Elohas lichot chanun v'rachum erech ha'paim v'ravka sadam tzeich ha'pra pesh ha'vakrava yesha u'minu chanechona tacha kanfei ha'shchina ha Malot Kidoshi Mutorium Gazora Kiamas Hirim at Nishmat Zeleg Ben Moshe Vimalka Shalach Lulamo Anna Balarachamim Zohra Lolotova Kolza Kuyuta Vitit Gota Vertsoda Chaim Uftahlo Shari Tzedek Vora Shari Hem of Hanina Bese Terkana Fechas Tireo Lulamim Utsror Betra Chaim and Nishmato Adonai unachato, v'yanuch b'shalom amishkavo, v'nomar amen. God of forgiveness, you who are gracious and compassionate, patient and abundantly kind, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure, to the soul of Zelig ben Moshe v'malka, Moshe ben Zelig v'malka, sorry, Moshe ben Zelig v'malka, who's gone to his eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that you remember all the worthy and righteous deeds he performs. May our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May his soul be bound in the bond of everlasting life. May he rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. And ask the immediate family to recite the Mourner's Kaddish with me. It's in the service uh, folder if you need it. Yitzgadal, Yitzgadash, Shemei Rabbah. Bialma divra chirute, Biam lich malchute, Bechaye chon, Uvyome chon, Uchaye de Hobe Israel, Baagala uvisman kariv vimru amen, Yehe shme rabba mavorach, Leolam ulame almaya, Yit barach, vish tabach, Vit paar, vit romam vit nase. Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shemei de kudusha brichu. Leela min kol birchata veshirata, tush bechata venechemata, damiran bealma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya. Bechaim alenu vial kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom biramav. Hu ya ase shalom. Alenu vial kol Yisrael vimru amen. In a moment, do you want to make some announcements? Okay. So at this point, um, it is considered a chesed shalomet, an act of loving kindness for we, the community of people who knew and loved Mel, to put him to his final rest. And so I ask each of you if you feel comfortable to participate in the burial. There are a few customs to know about. Um, one is, is that we don't hand the shovel from one person to the next. We put it back into the earth. The other is that we do at least three because it's considered something permanent when you do something three times as opposed to have the feeling that you're doing one and kind of rushing away from the responsibility. And some people, not everyone, and you don't have to follow this custom, to differentiate the act of shoveling, something that's very special, and an act of kindness from a normal act of shoveling. For the first shovel full, you, you put the blade upside down and push the earth in, because you never do that in a normal act of shoveling. I'll ask the immediate family to come forward first. There's also small pails for people who have trouble with the shovel of the larger um, earth and uh, everyone can participate.
invite anybody who would like to participate, so please step forward, either side. Don't. You can come forward. I went to him for a little while too. Okay. 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 This concludes the live streaming at the cemetery. Thank you.
Yeah, I, I knew them pr pretty well because they lived across the street from my grandparents. Zella Gavali did. I was over for the holidays. Yes, I would like that. Thank you.